Hello viewers and once again welcome to my class. Today we are going to discuss about the topic sphagnum. Sphagnum is another interesting genus within the class Sphagnopsida among the graphite. So let us see about our today's topic that is about the genus sphagnum. This genus sphagnum within the class Sphagnopsida is also known as Pit moss due to its ecological importance in the formation of pit. So this genus is systematically it belongs to the family Sphagnaceae, order Sphagnels, classes Sphagnopsida within the division Bryophyta. Now let us move on to the distribution part. So it is commonly known as bog moss also. Apart from this, the common term pit moss or also known as Turf moss because of its ecologically important character. And it is represented by about 342 different species, which are cosmopolitan in distribution and are found all over the world. But in our country, that is India, in India, it is represented by about 20 different species, and they are mostly confined into the Himalayan region. Now, habitat of this particular genus sphagnum, they are mostly aquatic or some of them may be semi-aquatic as well. And they grow in dense masses, rather they form this cushion-like structure and they are mostly found in swamps, ponds, as well as in moist and wet hillsides also. The gametophytic phase of this particular genus sphagnum is also very distinct. External morphology, if we look into this external morphology of this particular genus, that is sphagnum, you can see that it is represented by two distinct stages. The first stage is called a juvenile protonema stage. Uh, we all know about this structure of protonema, which is, uh, which is uh, produced immediately after the termination of the spore. And there is another mature leafy structure which is called the gametophore stage. So this is the structure of a juvenile gametophytic phase of this particular genus sphagnum. And you can see that here rhizoids are present and they are also with oblique shepta. But the interesting feature is that these rhizoids, they are not present in this mature leafy gametophore stage in this particular genus sphagnum. So this is the structure of this mature gametophytes, which are devoid of rhizoids. They do not possess these rhizoids as they are mostly aquatic or semi-aquatic. And this function of anchorage is not required. And the absorption of water and other minerals, it takes place through these leaves. So that is why the mature gametophores or gametophytic phase in this particular genus sphagnum, here the rhizoids are absent. Now let us see the structure of this mature gametophytic plant body. So it is differentiated into two parts, an upright axis part or stem part and the leaves. Now they also produce branches as you can see here in this particular picture. And these branches are again of two different types. The first type is called this pendant branches which run parallelly along with this main axis or stem and the other one is in upward direction and they are called the upwardly divergent branches. So these are the two different types of branches and this is the main axis or the stem in the plant body of sphagnum. The gametophytic phase, let us see the structure of the leaves. The leaves are also very small. They are sessile, that means they do not have any stalk. And they are scale like with an acute apex and a broad base. Another characteristic feature present in the leaf of this sphagnum is that they are devoid of midrib. And the leaves are present both on the main axis as well as on these branches, both on this divergent as well as on this pendant branches. And they are present spirally, and that is how the arrangement of leaf it is known as spiral pyrotexy in this genus sphagnum. So let us move on to the anatomy part. 
anatomically the stem or this main axis it is differentiated into three different regions outermost middle and the central portion the outer cortex it is also known as hyloderm the middle region it is prosenchymatous and it is also known as hadrome and its function is to provide the mechanical strength to the stem of this genus sphagnum and this central or this internal region it is known as medulla and its function is it act as a storage region for the plant body of sphagnum let us see the anatomy of the leaf structure in so anatomically the structure of the leaf is quite different as you can see here in this picture the cross section of the leaf shows that it is one celled in thickness and it is made up of two different types of leaf cells this colored one that is the green one these are the chlorophyllous cells which are containing chloroplasts and they are assimilatory in function and the second type of cell is these are the hyaline or colorless cells and they have the capacity of absorption and retention of water and that is why they are also known as the capillary cells and due to this action this absorptive and retain retentive nature of water of these hyaline cells the rhizoids are not necessary in the mature gametophytic phase in this genus sphagnum another interesting and characteristic structure or character in the cross section of leaf in this genus sphagnum is the presence of these two types of cells that is this chlorophyllous cell and this hyaline cells so they are present in such a manner that they form a regular reticulate pattern and this is the identifying mark or character in this genus sphagnum let us move on to the reproduction part the genus sphagnum it reproduces by two different methods the first method is vegetative and the second one is sexual method let us see vegetatively how it reproduces so vegetatively it reproduces by these three different methods the first method is called innovation now what is innovation before some time we discussed about the gametophytic structure of this genus sphagnum and we got two different types of branches one as was pendent branches and the other one was divergent branches now this divergent branches which makes a 90 degree angle with the main axis or stem of this genus sphagnum they sometimes grows upwardly and they become as strong as the main axis or the stem and such from such an apical branch a new plant body of sphagnum may reproduce and that method is known as innovation the second method is called multiplication of protonemal branches now what is protonema it is the initial gametophytic structure after the germination of the spores now sometimes the marginal cells of the primary protonema they may grow into thallus like green secondary protonema and the marginal cells of this secondary protonema they after detachment can produce leafy gametophores so this is how through the second method of vegetative reproduction this plant body of sphagnum they can reproduce another method is called regeneration what is regeneration it is the capacity of tissue or cell to regrow after an injury or heavy damage so this plant body of sphagnum it also has a heavy power of regeneration they can withstand a very adverse environmental condition when there is less star amount of water and they under those environmental condition they may restrict some of their physiological activities like respiration and photosynthesis but as soon as the water becomes available the tissue or cell they may regrow because the protoplasm is still in living condition and that is how they can regenerate a new gametophytic plant body in this particular genus sphagnum 
Now let us see about this sexual method of reproduction. The sexual method is oogamous. Now it may be monoecious as well as dioecious. That means the uh, sex organs may born on a single plant body or maybe on a on two different plant body. Now if they are monoecious, they are protandrous. That means the male sex organs are produced earlier than the female sex organ. Both the male and female reproductive organs they develop on special separate branches known as the antheridial branch and archegonial branches in this sphagnum plant body. And these reproductive branches they are much smaller than the vegetative branches. So this is the structure of an antheridial branch you can see here. These branches are developed near the main shoot of the plant and if we cut an LS through this antheridial branch we can see a structure like this. So here you can see these are the mature antheridium which are enclosing a large mass of androcytes and these androcyte cells they lateral metamorphosis into a biflagellated anthrozoid or sperm and by the process of dehiscence or breaking of this wall of this antheridium that is it becomes absorptive it absorbs water and it swells up and the swollen antheridia it breaks thereby releasing the spores or the sperm so that is how the dehiscence it takes place and this mature antheridium they are well protected by these leaves. So this is the structure of this male sex organ that is the antheridium in this genus sphagnum. Let us see the male female sex organ that is the archegonium structure. So this is an archegonial branch and if we cut LS through this archegonial branch you can see that this female sex organs that is this archegonia they are produced in groups. However, sometimes they may also be produced in single. Now, this is the structure of a mature archegonium you can see here, and they are enclosed by these leaves known as the parachytium. They are well protected by these parachytium leaves. Now, here, this mature archegonium it has a long stalk. A neck is there, which is composed of neck canal cells. There is a venter consisting of this venter canal cell and the egg is well protected within this venter of this archegonia. So this is the structure of the female reproductive organ that is archegonia within these archegonial branches in this genus segment. Now when these sex organs mature they will eventually go for fertilization and this process requires water which is essential to complete the process of fertilization in this genus sphagnum also. Why water is essential? Because the anthrozoids or the sperms they swims in water so as to reach the female sex organ that is the archegonium. Now when the archegonium matures the neck canal cell and the ventral canal cell they disorganizes forming a plastis and through these passes, the anthrozoids, they reach the archegonium, they will unite, complete the process of fertilization, and the final product will be a diploid zygote or a oospore. So that is how the process of fertilization is completed, and the next phase, that is the sporophytic generation, it begins. So this is the sporophytic phase, you can see here, the diploid zygote is the first cell of the sporophytic generation and the sporophytic generation it ultimately leads to the production of the mature sporogonium also known as the sporophyte so this is the sporogonium or the sporophyte and it has a foot and a capsule so this is a capsule and at the warmest region there is a foot but theta is absent so if we cut a ls a longitudinal section through this sporogonium or the sporophyte you can see a structure like this so here a bulbous parenchymatous foot is present and above this foot this is a spherical capsule is present which is dark brown in color at maturity now this capsule 
it has the central strand which is called the columella which has a very important role to play during the process of dehiscence or spore dispersal mechanism above this columella there is an arc or dome shape with spore shape is there within which the spores are present then other sterile structures are present like the scalitra operculum the annulus are present zecate flare is there then this is the neck or the constriction food all these are the sterile tissues which are present in the sporogonium or sporophyte in the genus sphagnum there is another interesting feature which is called this pseudopodium is present which is none other than a kind of connecting bridge between this food and this capsule and they are connected by this short narrow neck like structure known as the pseudopodium so this is the overall structure of the sporogonium or the sporophyte in this genus now let us move on to the dehiscence mechanism or the spore dispersal mechanism of this sporogonium or sporophyte so you can see here this is the structure of the sporogonium okay so it is spherical and this is the structure just before the dehiscence or dispersal and this is what happens just after the process of dispersal or dehiscence of the sporogonium so the capsule it dehisces by a mechanism known as the explosive mechanism and it happens during a hot sunny day so during hot sunny days what happens the capsule wall and the columella which is a central strand it dries up and they become shrunken due to extreme heat and it results in the formation of a large air space just below the spore set which is present within this capsule region now due to the development of this air space it causes the operculum which is the lid of this capsule to burst so this lid or the operculum it will be blown away and thereby it will release the spores into the air so this is an explosive mechanism it happens during hot sunny days when there is moisture less moisture content so this is how the dehiscence or the dispersal of the spore takes place in case of the sporogonium of sphagnum so this is the overall life cycle of the genus sphagnum you can see there is an alternation of generation between this diploid sporophytic phase and this haploid gametophytic phase so after the fertilization the diploid zygote or the oospore it is the first cell of the sporophytic generation it will produce the sporogonium ultimately lead to the development of haploid spores and these haploid spores are the first cell of the gametophytic generation then these haploid spores they will again undergo reproduction either vegetatively or sexually so as to produce the diploid oospore following fertilization and that is how their life cycle of this particular genus pegnum it is completed so this is all about our today's class so thank you for watching and please don't forget to like and subscribe this video thank you and once again